Welcome back. I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm going to discuss some common indoor air quality issues in residential homes taken right from ACA Manual RS, which is HVAC by design. We're going to discuss the common ventilation problems, how duct leakage impacts indoor air quality, a combustion appliance zone, and the required testing, and wrap it all up with a little bit of discussion on air filters. So without further ado, here's the training. So a lot of these problems revolve around ventilation. More than half of the problems fall into these categories. Not enough fresh air in the home. Drafts that you're not controlling or stagnant air because you're not moving the air. It's either too hot or too cold air or too humid or too dry when you're bringing it in. And then of course, if you're not filtering the air. These all add up to 50% of the air problems in the house. It's crazy to think about that you can address most of this with just a correct installation of a HVAC system, right? But if you don't address these things and you just replace a system, you're gonna have the same problems and the same uncomfortable situations in the home. So you have to walk through this when you're offering solutions in the house and ask them about drafts and stagnant air and you big temperature differences between rooms if you're not operating the HVAC system while you're there as a salesperson, right? You gotta ask those, those comfort needs questions. So let's talk a little bit about AAQ. Now, what I'm not gonna address is uh, problems like when you have a solarium or jacuzzi room or uh, just a straight up greenhouse off the back of your house. This does not address that and none of the residential manuals do. You actually have specific uh, manuals for pools and for solariums, right? So there's specific design conditions for that. I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about the basics, right? So um, return ducts. Uh, if you have poor quality air and you disperse it throughout the whole home because you have leaky return ducts and it's pulling from the attic, like here in the picture on the right, um, obviously you're, you're going to make a bad system worse. Um, if you were to install a high efficiency system that's variable speed, you're just going to slow that air down and make that system worse as a home, right? Um, if leaks are downstream from the filter, obviously it's not it's not going to be filtered, right? So if you have return leaks that are at the unit, but the filter is in the filter grill, it's going to suck all that attic air in, right? Um, excessive loading of filters will happen with all that leakage coming from a dusty attic or um, stuff that's coming from outside because it's vented to outside, right? So really heavy pollen seasons, you can easily pull that up into the attic and you can see it in the insulation where the air was moving through it. Um, all that stuff in a leaky return duct will just load up that filter and um, you'll have to replace that thing very often and typically it's not often enough given that situation. Obviously, uh, you're going to increase the sensible and the latent loads when you have re poor return duct work and leaking duct work and uh, uh, cold air is going to increase the heating load in the winter time too if you're sucking that from an unconditioned space. So that could be in a basement, a crawl space or an attic. If it's unconditioned, bringing in cold air into the return is typically not a good thing for a gas furnace or even a heat pump, right? So really important when we're doing system replacements or we're upgrading systems, we're addressing the ductwork. Starts with air sealing and then insulation. Now, um, the good, right? Uh, return ducts, really, you could increase ventilation by doing this. And um, if your home is a po has maintains a positive pressure, because of the return duct leakage and sucking in all that outdoor air. If it's a positive pressure in the space, it'll actually reduce the infiltration of the home. So it's amazing if you don't address the house and you just seal up return ducts, it's very easy. You could start pulling air from outside in other spaces of the home. And, and I'm gonna get very serious here. That could be the combustion appliance zone where your naturally vented hot water heater is like this basement down here in this picture. If you seal up that duct work, and now we start to depressurize um, spaces in there and we start pulling air from that space, it could easily backdraft that, that water heater and just distribute carbon monoxide around the home. So it's really important when you seal ductwork, you actually um, make, do a combustion appliance zone uh, test and, and make sure you're not pulling carbon monoxide back into the house, whether it's from a fireplace or a hot water heater or even um, uh, unvented appliances. There are some out there still, later or not, right? Um, now, supply ducts, the bad side of supply ducts. 
you could actually um, increase infiltration if you have leakage because you're going to pull the amount of air you need back from the return, but you're not going to get the supply air into the space. So you actually start to depressurize rooms. And we see this a lot when you only have a single return in a hallway and you depressurize the hallway, trying to pull the air at back from the supplies in those rooms um, that maybe you undercut doors or have some transfer grills or something like that. But if you're not pulling enough back, and there's a big pressure difference, you could actually increase infiltration that way. Now, of course, uh, poor odors and moisture problems, temperature and humidity drift, if you can't get the air to where it needs to go, you're not gonna be able to, to cool that space or heat that space effectively, and you're gonna notice it when you walk across those rooms or floors. So that's why we talked about that first, what's acceptable and then what to look for, right? So when we talk about duct leakage, that's probably a big portion of the culprit here. Now, if you've never done a combustion appliance and fuel distribution system inspection, um, highly recommend you just go over to bpi.org. There's free resources there, and they actually give you the carbon monoxide thresholds for combustion appliances, whether um, you depressurize a space or not. This is the maximum that's allowed in parts per million, air-free, that you measure with your combustion analyzer before you actually have to shut it down and do maintenance or do service. I see this quite often out there where um, maybe a gas company employee or somebody that's doing an inspection sees a really high number, gets scared, shuts the gas off, shuts off the furnace or boiler, and says you have to replace it. And I've been out there many times in my previous life here uh, before I was focusing so much on heat pumps. Um, I would actually go out there and these condemned boilers, I'd stick my probe in with my combustion analyzer. Sure enough, 350, 400 parts per million air free. I said, oh my gosh, that, that's really bad. And I would shut it down, do maintenance, make sure I set the uh, the draft correctly, make sure I set the gas presser right, turn it back on, and it's back down to like 50. So it's pretty crazy. Um, if you do maintenance, we don't have these problems. Um, sometimes maintenance is deferred so long, it creates a problem that can't be fixed though. Uh, but most of them can be. Uh, but maybe the answer isn't necessarily just replacing the boiler or furnace. Maybe we just take that gas burning appliance out of a house. We don't burn fires like we're in caves anymore. I don't understand why we continue to stay down this loop. There are other more efficient, more comfortable ways to heat and cool a house, right? So uh, maybe that's the opportunity if this thing gets condemned to put in something that's healthier and better for the, the people in the house, okay? So we get off the soapbox on that one. Let's talk a little bit about air filters here. So IAQ filters, this is actually from Honeywell Home. Um, it's really easy to find a lot of MERV rating information, but what I want to point out here is MERV 1 to 4 is just going to pick up dust and pollen and stuff like that, carpet fibers, big things, and usually that's a 1 inch filter. If you go above MERV 4, you really should have a 2 inch or larger filter. Most commonly you'll see uh, color coded pleated filters, white is usually MERV 6 or 8 I believe, MERV 7 I know is blue. Um, those were picked up mold spores, uh, probably like cement dust, dust mites, things like that, a little bit finer. So the higher the MERV rating, the more stuff that's going to come out of the air, right? If you're going to a, a MERV 10 or 12 filter, it really should be three or four inch wide in a filter box or an accordion style. Anything bigger than that, most likely, or, or higher than that for a MERV rating, it's most likely an electronic air cleaner, right? So when you actually talk to homeowners, believe it or not, if you don't bring this up, I doubt they will. Maybe these days with, uh, you know, so many viruses going around and stuff like that. But 28%, this was prior, this was two years ago, way before COVID hit. 28% already wanted better air purification in the home. I'm willing to bet in the United States that number went through the roof in the last two years. Now, 75% 75, 75 of them believe dust, allergens, viruses, and bacteria were the top three concerns of that 28%, right? So I think that that whole market got bigger in the last year and a half. And already 40% use two or more portable air purifiers in the house. Imagine if we can just do this easily across the entire home instead of only doing two rooms or two spaces, right? And it would be much more efficient with some of these variable speed ECM motors than it would be plugging into a 110 and letting that thing spin in, 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 your, uh, in your office or your, your bedroom. So really important, we can treat the whole home, not just necessarily one room, if we take the time and ask the homeowner and address the real problems. Just keep in mind, the higher the MERV rating, the bigger the pleats, 
or the more electronic you're getting. And obviously you want to make sure there is a rating that we don't add any ozone. Some electronic air cleaners, especially older ones, may add ozone to the air. And I found out the hard way, some people are allergic, actually allergic to ozone. I put it in an electronic air cleaner one time and it made their allergy worse. So you have to ask what they're allergic to. So what did you think on the training on indoor air quality? I'd love to hear what you found most valuable in the comments below. That was a short excerpt out of a Patreon exclusive webinar from one year ago. If you like these trainings, you want to get them one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $8 a month. Be sure to join us next week where I'm going to talk about winter humidification and how that impacts comfort. Thanks for joining me at HVAC Pro Blog where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.